friends today back with another video tutorial showing you guys some awesome trippy music video tricks in adobe after effects so i was actually inspired to make this video from this little mosey pull up video on elevator it just hit a million views um and i was actually inspired to make this because of this cool effect right here with these trippy little clones flickering in the background with this distortion over them so now i'm going to show you guys exactly how to do that in after effects so my version is a little bit different i've got some different settings for the clones um everything's going to be a little bit different the whole goal for these tutorials is i just want to show you guys the steps and the thought process but so that you guys can create something new something as an individual something that's unique to yourself using these kind of steps Hopefully this inspires you just to make some cool stuff And if you do make some cool stuff with this effect make sure you guys show me social media links will be on the screen right now Go ahead and send me your stuff I love being able to see what you guys create with these tutorials anyways Let's get right into this if you are using slow motion footage, I recommend you do it this way just because After Effects has some issues when it comes to the composition size um, of certain things. If you shot this at 120 frames per second, which I did, I'm going to right click this. I'm going to go to modify and interpret footage, and I'm just going to make this 24. So I've already gone in and done this. Um, and once we bring it into our timeline, you'll see that this is all in slow motion already, just like this. I'm going to right click this and I'm going to bring this into After Effects. And like I said, I'm using slow motion footage for this. So for my masking to be able to work, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using the rotoscope method. I have a bunch of videos talking about how to rotoscope mask. It's a pretty fast way to mask. I'm going to link you guys down below if you'd like a full step-by-step -step tutorial on how to rotoscope, but we are going to be rotoscoping in this. So let's set this up to be able to rotoscope. And rotoscoping basically is just a built-in After Effects tool that allows us to mask very quickly. So what we're going to do is come up here to composition, go to composition settings, and we're just going to make this 24 because that is what we set our footage. Just make sure the frame rate in your composition matches whatever your clip was shot at, or like I said, the rotoscope is going to have some issues. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to double click on this footage right here in our timeline. It's going to bring this into a layer. If it does not say layer up here, just make sure you double click on it again until it does say layer and we're working within a layer. Next, what we're going to do is come up here to our toolbar and click on this little tool, the roto brush tool with this person and the brush right here. That is going to bring up this green crosshair. And now what we can do is we can actually go along the edges of our subject right here and start to mask them out. So I'm going to go like this and try and make this as uh, good as possible. So here's what we got. Now all we have to do is go in and make some adjustments. So color this in green just so it is covered by the mask. And then if you would like to get a part out of the mask, like for example right here, you hold down Alt on your keyboard, you're going to see this crosshair turn red, and then you can just cut out a piece just like this. And like I said, I've talked about this method so many times before in a lot of my videos where I use masking. So if you would like a more step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do this rotoscope method, I'm going to go ahead and link you below. Check it out if you're having trouble with this. So we got a nice rough outline of him right here. Now all we have to do is let's go into our effect controls and let's just bump up the feather to something maybe like seven, something like that. And now all we have to do is click the page up and page down keys on our keyboard to move frame by frame and make any adjustments to this mask. So let's go back to the beginning. And like I said, I'm going to use the page down key. I'm going to move frame by frame. Since this is in slow motion, you're going to see that the mask does not move a lot. So we can actually just go a bunch of frames actually. And now once we start seeing this thing starting to mess up, we hold down the alt and just alt key to get rid of the mask. And we just make any adjustments just like that. So, so depending on how long you'd like this effect to last, if you go and you hold down control alt, you can actually zoom in on your little timeline right here. You're going to see this gray bar with arrows. You can actually extend that for however long you'd like it. If you've gone as far as you'd like to for this effect, what you can do is if you hold down control alt, we can re-zoom in on this gray bar that I was talking about. We can take the very edge of this and just end this right where the green bar is. This is how much you've gone through. This is basically the progress that has been rendered in. We're also going to go to the end of this and we're going to take the gray bar and move that just to the bottom of this yellow square. That is your starting position. So now we've got our, so now we've got all of our adjustments made. So now what we're going to do, we're going to go back to the effect controls for the roto brush. We're going to bump the reduce chatter up to around 70. And we're also going to just reduce the edge a little bit just so we can cut off any of that excess that we missed, maybe around negative 57. It really depends on your clip. If you zoom in here, you can really see what you're doing. 
Once you made those adjustments, you can go ahead and click this freeze button right here. If you don't see that freeze button, just make sure you change the size of your panels so you can. It might be covered up like that. So go ahead and click that freeze button and you're going to see the computer go in and actually mask this out for you. So it's a really cool way to mask. Like I said, you don't have to do it this way. This is just the way that I did it. You can use any kind of way down below. I'll also link you guys to a video I made of three different ways you can mask. There's also things like Mocha available for you guys to be able to mask. So anyway, you want to mask, you can use just to pull it off. Rotoscoping is definitely a good way. Okay, so once you've gone through and done that, this is what you're going to get. You're going to have this rotoscope footage. This one came out a tiny bit choppy, but it's fine just for tutorial's sake. I found this method does work a lot better if you're working with anything to 60 frames per second. Once you get up to like 120 frames per second, the rotoscoping is a little bit harder to do and it might be a little bit choppier. So if you're shooting at like 60 frames per second, you should be fine. But if your composition is at 120 frames per second, it might be a little weird. But if that doesn't apply to you, don't worry about what I just said. Now I'm going to show you guys how to create this effect. So you've done all your masking. You've isolated the subject just like this. The background is cut out and transparent. This is what we're going to do. So go ahead and click on your footage like this. Click control C, control V. So we just made a duplication. And now what we're going to do is click on our bottom duplication. We're going to go to effects. And then we're just going to click on the roto brush and delete it. And that's going to bring back the background. So now what we have is we have a layer of just the isolated subject like this. And we have a layer of just everything normal, the background. What we're going to do is we're actually going to click on the isolated footage, click control C, control V again. So we're making another duplication. So now we have two of these isolated footage clips, as you see right here. And the reason why we just did that is because we want to have the effects behind the person, but still have the background there. So that's why we made the duplication and put another isolated footage underneath just the subject. So just based off the music video, the effect that it looked like was a Sapphire Distort or any kind of Distort effect, which you can find out there. I'm going to be using Sapphire Distort. If you guys do have Sapphire Distort, it'll work just like that. Or you can just look for any other kind of Distort effect throughout YouTube, throughout Google to be able to get something similar. So let's go ahead and take Sapphire Distort and put it on our middle clip because this is the one that is behind the subject just like this. And now you're going to see that it's behind the subject and the background is still there, which is what we want. So now all we have to do is just load in some presets, change some of the settings to get what we like and we are set so, so let's go ahead and just load a preset in our effect controls for sapphire distort i'm going to pick this one called melted mental image that one looks pretty cool you can pick whichever one you like and what you can do now is you can just click on the cursor you can move this wherever you'd like and then you can change any of the settings like the amount so for example if you'd like to keyframe it if we go to the beginning we can actually set this to zero so it's normal we can click and keyframe the amount we can drag a little bit and then we can make this something crazy like that. And then since we keyframe that, you're gonna get an effect like this, where it kind of warps outward just like that. Let's do another one of these. If you would like to make another clone and put it over here, let's click on our middle clip, click Control C, Control V. So we made a duplication of that. Let's go ahead and move that one over here, just so we can see what it looks like. And then let's go ahead and make this thing do something crazy too. So let's get rid of that keyframe. Let's go back to the very beginning and actually make a new keyframe. Key let's make that zero so it's normal. Click on the keyframe button, drag to where you would like the crazy distortion to happen, and let's go ahead and just change around some settings. So let's make this one like this, um, and maybe we'll load another preset. Maybe something like Funhouse Mirror where we have this kind of split. So let's go to the beginning, let's keyframe this to start at zero. Let's go and move a little bit more and then we can just change the amount of this and you'll see it kind of like split in two. That's a pretty cool one, just like that. Like I said, go ahead and mess around with the presets. You guys can create some really cool stuff with this. And then to finish this all off, I noticed that there was also a Sapphire Flicker effect in that little Mosey video. So go ahead and add the Sapphire Flicker onto your two clones that you just made. And then you're going to get something like this where you see that flickering in the background. It looks really cool. I think I kind of overdid it. Um, in the little Mosey video, they were kind of like more small, more out of the way. Mine is kind of more of like direct like clones coming out. So you guys can really, so you guys can really experiment. If you want to make it smaller, go ahead. If you want to make it more big, like kind of clone like, go ahead and do that too. You guys can really get creative with this part of the video. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you'd like to see next in the comment section down below. If you guys are new here, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Join our community for regular content, music videos, tutorials. Anyways, guys, please like the video. It helps this channel a lot. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys later.